Hello, everybody. We are live. Good morning or good afternoon if you're in Europe, I guess. Uh, so we have a great group of people. We've got Heather is also going to be popping in in a few minutes, but um, we've got a great group great group of people here to recommend all the queer contemporary romances that you might need for the Queer Romance Readathon. So thank you so much to everybody for joining. Um, briefly, if you want to kind of go around and um, kind of share who you are, where people can find you on the internet, what you like to read, whatever you want to share. And you can kind of go in a go clockwise. Okay, perfect. That's me. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Kathy of Kathy Trithart. Have fun spelling that or saying that yourself because everyone does. Um, you can find me if you can spell my name because I'm Kathy Trithart on everything that matters. Um, and uh, I read kind of everything. Uh, there's pretty much no genre I won't at least dip a toe into. Um, and yeah, obviously uh, enjoying the queer books as well. Uh, I also co host the Queer Lit Readathon, which is the week before the uh, queer romance readathon. So if you're wanting to expand what you're reading that month, definitely join us. Yes, do that. Hello, I'm Izzy from Happy For Now. I um, mostly talk about romance on my channel, but also talk about manga and romance news and stuff. And I also am a co-host of the Chapter 3 podcast with Bethany. And I remembered it this time. I always forget. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can find me over there at Happy For Now. And then Isabel's all right on all other social media platforms. Michelle. Uh, hey, honey, watch day. My name is Michelle from Throw Once Another Letter. Um, I like to read like indigenous literature queer literature contemporary middle literally anything and then i also like to uh snail mail and bullet journal um co-host of indigathon and you can find me at thor wants on on another letter on pretty much anything nice um so I'm Adri, my channel's Perpetual Pages. I am a queer, trans, non-binary, Mexican-American booktuber, book reviewer, writer, creative, that kind of stuff. I use they, them pronouns, and I've been on booktube since 2013. So as of November this year, it will be nine years. So that's wow. exciting. Uh, so I've been doing it a while <laughs> and I read pretty much everything. So across any age range or demographic or genre, anything like that, I'm pretty much open to anything as long as it's good. I'll read it. Mostly queer stuff, mostly stuff by marginalized authors, of course, but I'm open to everything. So that's me. Awesome. Hi, I'm Heather from Here Book Tubes. I read romance and do lots of romance recommendations and discussion videos. Thank you for joining. And I'm so glad we have a group. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I didn't know what to expect because I know it's early for some people. So I'm glad people are here. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Um, okay. So I don't know how y'all want to organize this. We could do it by prompt or by sort of age category or how, or we could just go around and like share something. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> Or if there's, and also if there's anybody watching who is is looking for a particular prompt that they're struggling to mm -hmm. meet, put it in the comments and I'm sure we'll have recommendations for you. So, hello. Yeah, my only feedback is definitely not the latter because I have like a three page list of books on my phone. So don't just throw it yeah. to say whatever. Good point. I, not <laughs> I mean, I have, like a, I have like a snack next to me, so yeah. <laughs> I just have good read shelves open. It's fine. Yeah, very organized. I, I started there, so yeah. I only have adult, so if you do age category, I got nothing for you. <laughs> I think I have like one or two YA. That's it, and I, I bet have, it's going to cross over with everyone else's. YA. Yeah, I have a few YA, but not a ton. Um, okay, why don't we? Let me. Okay, let me. Let me look at the the prompts, mm. and. Um, we can do that. Okay, so let's do an indie recommendation. Mm. Something to recommend by an indie author, and if it meets other prompts as well, let everybody know. Um, I have one I can start with that I like. Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. 
is an excellent uh, contemporary romance that's very adorable and fun. And um, it's a male male romance by a gay author. So it meets that prompt. It's an indie published title. It is uh, by a black author. So it meets all of those. And this is just like a really sweet bookish opposites attract kind of romance. Sweet, but steamy. When I say sweet, I don't mean not sexy because it is, but it's also just cute. <laughs> so. Let's see. I, um, I'm trying to look up the publisher of this because I'm like, I honestly very rarely know who publishes things. I think it might be indie published, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, it's Knit One Girl Two by Shara Glassman. It's just a novella, but it's super, super cute about two girls. Um, one of them I believe is an artist and the other one is uh, into dyeing wool and they're working on an installation together and it's just really, really cute. And then you've got um, lesbian rep, you've, it's a novella, you've got Jewish rep. It's, it's very, very cute. <laughs> but again, I'm like trying to look up the, uh, the if it's indie or not. And I, okay. I couldn't do that. It sure is indie. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. 99% yes, sure it is a uh, self-published author. I thought so, but I was like, oh, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I've got Fall Into You by Georgina Kirsten. She is a Black author. Uh, she is 99% sure she's a lesbian. Uh, I like it's all better than a lesbian. Are they're trans mass, I believe. They're, that's what it is. Yes, they're trans they mass. Are. So that's, I'm sorry, is early. <laughs> and I did not pull up her author notes yet. Um, but this is a really, really cute friends to lovers romance set in the fall, kind of. So kind of nice in the summer. Maybe you can pretend it's cold out. <laughs> um, and it was just a really cute, like, somewhat used to know each other. Friends to lovers. They move back to the hometown. It features a plus size character. Um the small town fun times like coffee shops and all that sort of stuff like little market festivals where they end up meeting mm -hmm. and it's just it's just really sweet again it's still steamy but very sweet like mm -hmm. just and very fall vibes which i want in the middle of june because i want to pretend it's not 100 degrees out <laughs> fair <laughs> anybody else have an indie one Oh, I do. I was going to see if Michelle was going to go. I didn't know if we were still going in clock. Yeah. Either <laughs> way, however we want to do this. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's indie or not. Maybe Audrey would know. Um, Our Bloody Pearl by Deanne Brin. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one's about yes, yes, um, yes. a siren and there's pirates. And I don't know. I It was like two years ago when I read it and it was during a very tragic time in my life. So I'm not 100% sure on like anything else that happened after like I think like I don't know 100 pages but it was really good yes and they and also the have another one soon, yeah yes I was gonna say otter still which sounds like otter the animal but it's otter o-d-d-e-r <laughs> yeah. still uh, so. okay <laughs> yeah so. I definitely recommend I'm very yeah. excited about that one yeah. yeah the one I was thinking of I'm pretty sure she self-publishes I think I'm not sure because I think sometimes she does it through a publisher sometimes she does it herself but I'm thinking of Adriana Herrera I'm thinking of the book Finding Joy by Adriana Herrera which is a queer contemporary adult romance about an Afro-Latina man who goes back to his homeland, his father's homeland of Ethiopia to do some nonprofit work and then falls in love with the man there. And it's like very soft and they're just like figuring out where they stand with each other and figuring out their queerness and their relationship. And it's really, really joyful as the title suggests and just really beautiful. The number of Adriana Herrera books I have to recommend. <laughs> like, yes. I feel like yes. she's just generally a good recommend, like most of, not all, but most of her yeah. books are queer. Yes. I literally looked at my list and I was like, well, I'm not going to wreck her because I know Bethany's got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. If she only, all the love. If yes. only, Izzy, you had given me the same consideration and not <laughs> taken the wreck that I gave you. I will never give you that consideration. You I, know this. Listen, okay. I don't have very many contemporary wrecks and you guys have already wrecked two of them. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not feeling very good right now. I don't think... <laughs> Oh, well. Um, okay, so I have Cups of You. Let me try and find my camera because I'm not very good at this. By Carmen Lee. This is a... Um, she wrecked the series as Hallmark, but queer with diversity and sex. <laughs> um, it's very, very cute. This one, they're all coffee shop romances. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't know that the main characters are queer. The second book is sapphic, and the third book, which is coming out right before the readathon, is male male 
But mm. I know there's lots of side characters and the author themselves is queer. And it is humorous without being like rom com -y. It's very sweet. It's angsty. I don't like angst, but I was still very into it. I really liked the writing, really liked the character work. It's per the hallmark, but with steam and diversity is the perfect description. Love it. So we have a question. Does anybody have adult recommendations with indigenous main characters? I have one that I, I knew found. Bethany and Michelle have at least one. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm trying to remember the one that I read last year. Um, so I have one that I just bought actually because I was looking mm. for for this. So I haven't read it yet, but there's one called Drowning in Fire by Craig Womack. Mm. And uh it's let me, let me find it. Hold on, because I haven't read it yet, so I don't I don't know a ton. Yeah. Um, I also have not read my rec yet. I'll just look it up yeah. really quick. Uh, okay. So yeah. So this one is about a guy. It starts when he's a a boy, a gay boy, growing up within the Muscogee Creek Nation and struggling with that, with like Christianity and stuff. And then as a man, so I think it's it like deals with more difficult topics, probably. Um, but it does have a romance in it, and so if you're looking for that, that might be a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Um. So the one we we read we read this last year, but it had. It was not about the couple, but there's another one. It's called Blessed by Maggie Blackbird. And mm, this one yeah. is about Emery and Daryl, where they've been friends for a really long time. Um, and there's like, okay, I'll just read the Amazon description. Um, it's been 10 years since Emery Matawapit sinned, having succumbed to temptation for the one thing in his life that felt right another man in six months he'll make a life-changing decision that will bar him from sexual relationships for the rest of his life daryl kijik has a decade-long chip on his shoulder and he holds emery's father the church deacon responsible for what he suffered the loss of his family and a chance at true love with emery no longer a powerless kid daryl has influence within the community maybe more than the deacon. Daryl intends on using his power to destroy Deacon Matawapit and his church, hoping to save the church Emery raises home, but stopping Daryl is harder than expected when their sizzling chemistry threatens to consume Emery. Now he's faced with the toughest decision of his life, pleases devout, devout parents and fulfill his call to the priesthood or remain true to his heart and marry the man created for him. Which they were super cute uh in the in the book that we read so. they were yeah because we read another a later book in the series which was great and yeah i had forgot about that good call i should i need to get that <laughs> i keep keep coming across the problem being like oh this one uh it's not romance it has romance yeah not really yeah. yeah it's hard um yeah i mean i do think yeah, it's 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 definitely tricky. There's not as much as you would like. I mean, honestly, f even just finding indigenous romance period is difficult. Yeah. That's um, not like super fetishized. Yeah, right. like that's hard as it is. So then Does finding anybody something. Know if any of RM virtues, if any of his characters are indigenous in any way? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I haven't read any of them sure. yet, so I'm not sure. His mm -hmm. books are really good. I'm just. I'm not 100 that's a good, sure. No, that's a good question. They I haven't list, read his books yet either, so I don't... I feel like they're good about listing stuff on their site, so may, maybe mm -hmm. we could search it. Maybe. No, it's a good idea. Good plan. <laughs> How many of us uh, are doing that? <laughs> it's just like Google. I'm, I am already Googling. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I just remembered because like every time I wreck their books, I like link to their website because they have the best list of everything that's in their yeah. books to like give people a heads up. And I'm always just like, oh, I appreciate this so much. You make my, my work so much easier when I'm linking your books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm glad somebody's enjoying Drag Me Up. That's awesome. I'm excited yeah. to read it next month. Yeah, I already got it from Kindle so I can read it during the read a thon. Yes. I read it last year. Nice. It is his yeah. first book, so I will say his work has continued to improve. So if you yeah. like that first one, you'll probably enjoy everything else even more. Mm. I love it. Love it. 
All right. Um, so while everybody's looking for that, also I'm like adding, like finding the one that Michelle mentioned because I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to read more in that series. Okay. All right. Another one also. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drag Me Up is contemporary. So even yes. though it is Hades and Persephone, it mm -hmm. is a contemporary world. There are no fantasy elements at all. Good point. Yeah. And so it's it's meeting a bunch of a bunch of things. Um, okay, good question. What is the Karina Adores line? Um, okay, so a couple of years ago, Harlequin started releasing the Karina Adores books, which are these contemporary, although they're about to branch out into some speculative which is exciting mm -hmm. i think they have a shifter romance coming but they start they mostly it's at this point it's contemporary lgbt tropey romances and i have a ton of them that i've been wanting to read which is why i put them like on this list um so probably other people have ones they're going to want to recommend to but like here's a stack of them <laughs> like I'm watching you struggle through this. <laughs> <laughs> so they all have they're all like this um so like this one is a trans romance by a trans author for the love of april french by penny ames i haven't read that one yet but i've heard heard it's good um got a sapphic one with a bisexual character knit pearl baby and a girl by hetty <laughs> bell you've got a gay oh, yeah. romance book boyfriend by chris ripper mm -hmm. this one just came out one that i think is going on my tbr for this is Devon, Devon and chris, and chris plan, plan a wedding, a wedding yep. by chancia c higgins which sounds really fun competing fake dating on a reality tv show oh yeah another sapphic one the girl next mm. door by chelsea m cameron that one's cute. Oh yeah, Chelsea M. Cameron. That's another indie mm -hmm. queer author. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then she's got these. And then if you're looking for another male male by a gay author rec, uh, mm. Just Like This by Cole McCade. Yes. I'm really There's glad I'm broke these. right now. <laughs> what? I said I'm really glad I'm broke right now. <laughs> <laughs> they have a ton. There's more than just that, but like they've they've put out a ton of really amazing things just in the last couple of years um which has been cool so one of my favorites on that line is hairpin curves oh. it's former friends two lovers so they like be for friends became enemies and they go on a road trip from florida all the way up to quebec mm. and it is really good like it's a very like it's in the winter and i'm like what are you doing you driving from florida into the snow in the winter but okay i mean i guess um but it was a, it's one of my favorites from what year did it come out 2020 yeah so i read it in 2020 and i loved it i was like that's wrecking awesome. this book to everyone that's great yeah so they've got a ton of stuff that's been coming out and i wanted to highlight it because it's a relatively new line and i would love to see it stop but i don't remember what i think i just saw it on net galley they have a shifter romance coming out in that line. So I am <laughs> interested to see like <laughs> where else they're going to go. Um, okay. Do we want to do anybody have YA romances they want to wreck? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you go fantasy. I have you can do, that's fine. Her. You can totally do fantasy. <laughs> I mean, I have two, but I, if other people have them, I don't want to take it. So if you guys, we all want to go, you're welcome to. Kathy, you sounded excited. Yeah. Sure. I was like, I've gone first before. So I'm like, I know <laughs> I have answers to this question. So I was I like, do. if you want to go first, go for it. <laughs> um, I mean, the one I immediately thought of, it's just a recent release is Cafe Con Lichi by Emery Lee, which is a queer YA rom-com. It's enemies to lovers. It's about um, these two characters. I think one is Asian American, the other one is Puerto Rican American, and their families own rival restaurants in town. Mm -hmm. And um, there's like a new fusion cafe that comes into town that threatens both of their businesses. And I believe they have to work together to try and like figure out how to save their family stores and then fall in love along the way. So there's that one. And Em really also wrote Meet Cute Diary, which is a trans rom-com with a tri-racial main character who I can't remember what I'm like 
I just went off the top of my head there. Now I can't remember what the book is about. But, um, I think it's about he's going to stay with his brother for the summer or something and like romantic shenanigans ensue. Like when he like tries to work for a bookstore and then tries to like fall in love with the guy. Yeah, things happen. So it's good. Yeah, I was going to say Shara Wheeler. That was that was on my yes. preemptive list because, yeah, it's it's super cute and just interesting and weird at points. And I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, OK, well, I have I have two. I have like a sapphic and a gay one. So yeah. um, the gravity of us mm -hmm. by Phil Stamper is yeah. really cute. Um, deals with a lot of like mental health stuff too, which I liked and has like space science-y things in it. But this is the one that would be a gay romance by a gay author. And I really loved it. It was his debut. And then um, one of my favorite books last year was mm -hmm. She Drives Me Crazy yeah. Yeah. by Kelly Quinlan. This was so cute. It's like an enemies to lovers with a fake dating thing. And it, it was just, it was wonderful. So nice. Yeah. I have, a, I have like a whole list, but the, another one I thought of was I'll Be the One by Lila Lee, yes. which is a queer romance between two bisexual characters, which I don't think we see enough of, like these straight passing romances between two characters who are actually queer, which is actually very queer. So yeah, there's that one. It's about like a fat, a fat Korean American bisexual girl who goes on like a television competition to become like the next K-pop star and ends up falling in love with, I believe one of her competitors, but it's like, it's really good, of course. <laughs> Yeah, it's so cute. I just read that last month. I loved it. I love that one. Yeah, he, he it was like the fellow competitor slash like semi famous person. It was, yes, it was yeah. an interesting mix. I, like, I remember he was famous. So I was like, I don't know. If yeah, he yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was in the competition. Too. It was weird. It was, a, it was a perfect mix, though. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Uh, one I really enjoyed a few months ago was The One True uh, Me and You by RK England or Remy yes. Kingsland. Um, that one is about uh, two different people going to the same hotel for different conventions. One of them is a very nerdy convention based off a TV show that is kind of like Sherlock, but it's not Sherlock. Uh, and then the other one is at a beauty pageant. And mm -hmm. like, she is very, very nerdy. So like she sneaks into this one and then meets our first character who is trying out new pronouns for the first time at yeah. the convention. And then like, they have um, the same foe, like the same person who's like, the annoying, terrible person at the beauty pageant also goes to school with the other one that's there for the not Sherlock convention. Um, so like it's a big thing. And I, I love when you have two different characters, but they have the same enemy. <laughs> yes. I, kind of I really like that. And it's like yeah. just a really smart way of doing it. So yeah, that mm -hmm. one was really cute. I enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Cool. I also feel like it would be wild to be talking about why romances and not talk about Julian Winters. Who right. also technically count as an indie author for his first two or three books, three books, because they were published through a small press. Only his most recent one was published through a traditional press. So, like, if you want to go that way, that's a thing. But yeah, he has Running with Lions, which, if you like sports queers, there's that one. Mm -hmm. Had me Remy Cameron, which is about like identity mm -hmm. and race and like intersectionality. And then The Summer of Everything, which is about like trying to figure out your life before you go off to college and everything's changing. And then sort of similarly, right where I left you is also kind of in, in that same vein where it's like upper YA on the brink of college, you know, trying to figure out where you stand with your friends and the person you're in love with before everything changes and you change schools and towns and all that stuff. So they're all delightful. They're all perfect. So if you don't know of Julian Winters, you need to know about Julian Winters. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, another one I just read recently is uh, She Gets the Girl, and it's about these two different girls that are going to the same university. Um, like, they're both in their first year. One of them wanted to tell her girlfriend she wanted to do the long distance thing, oh, but yeah. like, they ended up, like, having a fight that night. Um, so now she needs to, like, prove she can do the long distance thing because her girlfriend is all like, oh, you flirt with other people. <laughs> and then the other one just uh, has had the had a crush on the same girl for like four years from her high school and that girl is also going to the university so basically the first one is teaching the second one how to get the girl basically like this is how you flirt this is how you have normal human interactions it's difficult I'm not I'm not very good at these things so like I don't feel bad mm -hmm. saying that she can't figure out how to do it because I can't either <laughs> yeah but, uh, and of course along the way maybe they don't end up with the people that you think they should at the beginning which is pretty clear part way through. Mm, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garzavilla, mm -hmm. which is an incredible queer YA romance uh, with a Mexican-American character who's like trying to get out of 
get out of Texas basically. And his dream is to go to college in California. But like one day he accidentally like drunk and drunkenly outs himself on Twitter. And, you know, so that's a fun experience and he has to deal with the ramifications of that. But then at the same time, because he outed himself on Twitter, like his cute uh, Twitter crush DMs him, slides into his DMs and he lives in California. So they begin having this long distance relationship, trying to figure out how that works and trying to figure out how they're gonna be together. And it is the best shit in the entire world. It's so cute. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, I know you said you had some YA stuff. I yes, think. Do you want, have I do. Ready? Okay, so this is a new release as well. This just came out on Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but last Tuesday. Um, it's called the The Summer Bitter and yeah. Sweet by Jen Ferguson. It's her debut novel. This was published under I don't know, and it's a heart drawn book. And I'm reading it for a video. I haven't started it yet, but there are some romantic elements, and the main character is demisexual. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was going to ask actually if people have recs for romances with ace rep. And I think Demi Demi would count for that. For oh, like, yeah. um, But if people have other uh -huh. If we go fantasy, then yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll just say it's a little bit cheating, but Alicia Dow writes fantastic demisexual mm -hmm. characters. And all her books are technically contemporary, contemporary sci-fi. Just yep. because it has sci-fi elements does not mean it's not set in our world and our time. So yeah. both of her books have demisexual characters and yep. I yeah I think one has a pansexual character I believe as well so mm -hmm. they're both fantastic and then anything by Claire Kahn as well generally yes. has yeah at least something that's who I was trying to think I'm like I've got an author in my head and I, was <laughs> yeah. like, I see the book cover and as soon as you said I was like that too yeah, yeah. I have, them. like I have a couple that I'll recommend when I do the sci-fi fantasy one too but I don't have yeah. as many of the contemporary yeah. I do actually have okay I so my other recommendation actually this one is adult, but um, the love hypothesis. By that was what I was about to say. Is it gets uh, ignored a lot that it has this rep, I feel like. Much. Yeah, but mm -hmm. she's demisexual as well. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. For, uh, <laughs> she didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was like another one. Nobody talks uh, about it. It's weird. Yeah. Another one for demi rep is uh, Technically You Started It by, I want to say Lana Wood Johnson. That might not be the exact name, mm. but it's something like that. That's too early and I'm having coffee. Um, but <laughs> that was written just over text messages and uh, oh. it's it's pretty cute. I like, I like that convention. The other um, ace book that is specifically uh, a romance that I wanted to say was Upside Down by N.R. Walker, which mm. is a romance book between two ace men. And I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the other one I thought of was a recent release, and I believe it's adult. It's Never Been Kissed by Timothy Janofsky, which I don't even know what that one's about, but I assume it's about someone who's never been kissed. So <laughs> and I've heard it has, I'm pretty sure it's demisexual rap as well. So yeah, I actually I want to look at the title right, but there's um Talia Hibbert has one of her indie titles mm. has a demisexual hero which isn't something you see very often. And I thought that was kind of cool. Oh yeah, That Kind of Guy. It's the third book in a Ravenswood series. So mm -hmm. that one, I really, I actually, I really liked it. It's very steamy, but like it takes, but it's, it's kind of cool to see. Cause we don't, we don't see that often like ace guys mm -hmm. in romances. So yeah. I, I have a couple. Did you want me to do the YA or the Demi? Whatever you first? like. Okay. Um, Zirin J. Zhao. Mm -hmm. has Iron Widow. They're a non-binary author. They do use they, them pronouns, so please use that. This one is polyamorous. Also, the main character is non-binary, I believe, because she has a lot of rage at the way that females are treated. And when she finds out about non-binary being a thing, she's like, that, that fits. That makes sense. So even though it's not on page, it's on page that she vibes with that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's polyamorous, so the guys are together along with her. It's great. Loved it. Also by the same And author. disability rep for that one. Yeah. 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 Which um, is explicit but binding. So just know it gets yeah. it gets gross, but it's very realistic. It's, it's what happened, right? Um, and then also their middle grade debut came out on the 10th. This is mm -hmm. Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor. The main character is a 12-year-old boy. He has a crush on another boy. That's all it says, at least so far, in what I've been reading, because I'm reading it to my kids. And they are Chinese-American. 
um, their mom left China when their dad was killed by the Chinese government. And now their mom is taken by demons and they're trying to save the world. The first emperor of China was supposed to possess them <laughs> and accidentally possess their uh, VR headset instead. Mm. So it's yu gi -Oh style. It's great. My kids who are nine and seven are loving this and it's really good. It's great. Oh, and also for Demi. <laughs> okay, so this one, one fall into you, that is you said, um, while the book itself is not space, the author is, and their other pen name is Ryan Fox, which is male, male demon romance. Mm -hmm. So while their books are pretty explicit, steam wise, the author themselves is ace, if you want that for a bingo. And um, then, <laughs> Another one that is Demi, but is very explicit sexually, because that's what I read a lot of. Let me see if I can find it. But it's The Queen's Line by Catherine Moon. The main character is the princess. Their matriarchy has a sex magic, and she doesn't have the magic, but actually she does. She's just demisexual and has to get to know people in order to be attracted to them. And mm. so when she has to pick all of her guys, her grandmother finds out, oh, you're broken. <laughs> so mm. she goes away and finds out the political situation in the kingdom is not what she was led to believe. And she also finds out that as she gets to know people, then she can't be attracted to them. So that one. Mm. That's cool. Awesome. Um, so disability representation because mm -hmm. um, I know that's one of the, the prompts as well um, I'm trying to think like what else I have because I yeah I have it's hard because I well actually um, you mentioned oh gosh now I can't Oh, Heather has something. But no, that's um, one from before. I just finally found the cover. <laughs> okay, everything's just going out of my head right now. But if somebody mm -hmm. else has like something they want to recommend, I'll while I find it. And the only one I thought of was like historical. So I was like, yeah, yeah that's okay. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I was just thinking of it. I was think just because I read it recently, which was a, a lady for a duke by Alexis Hall. Yes. Yeah, which is a that's trans so historical <laughs> romance with a trans feminine main character and. The love interest who is a duke has a disability. He sustained an injury in the war. So he uses a mobility aid to help him walk. And he also has like PTSD and other like depression and and, and also a um, possible substance addiction that he's also dealing with as well. So there's a lot happening in that book and it is perfect. Perfection. It's really good. Yeah. So one of the ones that I didn't mention earlier for YA is Rise to the Sun. And one of yes. the Agnes has asthma. So yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for mentioning Leah Johnson. Yes. Yeah, I love Leah Johnson. <laughs> uh, Alicia Dow's debut, um, yes. the Sound of the Stars, has mm -hmm. a disabled main character. Well, she, she's got like chronic illness. I think that could count. I believe so. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. And Demi. Yeah. And Demi. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know. I feel like I have. I feel like none of mine overlap with queer that I have for disability, yeah. which is yeah. weird because um, you would think it would. Like obviously, Talia yeah. Hibbert. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talia yeah, Hibbert. yeah. Um, Better Life, Chloe Brown. Yes. Uh, but which I mean, I guess well. it's hard because that one the characters aren't necessarily the characters aren't queer right. for that one. Is, but like, is but, anybody in Eve Brown? Not Eve Brown. That's not who I want. Chloe Brown. Is anybody in Chloe Brown? I don't remember. I, don't I, remember I mean, I know like Danny Brown is bi. Bi, so that one counts. Um, so that counts, but it doesn't have the disability. Yeah. Um, in right Drag Me Up, the main character uses a cane. So this one. Okay. Is oh, there we go. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And the, author count. Also disabled. and the author is disabled. That's the other thing, too. If an author is, is disabled, that also would count for that. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say um, "Far from You" by Tess Sharp um, has like a drug dependence um, background. I can't remember; it was years ago that I read it, but uh, I remember that being like a big representation point in it. Mm -hmm. Georgina Kirsten slash Ryan Fox is also a disabled author. Mm -hmm. 
it's real great. Yeah, it's chronic pain um, and then drug dependency for Far From You by Tess Sharp. Okay. Oh, okay. I do have, uh, see, this is the problem is some of them, like all of my, my recommendations are a little more, I could share it here. It's sort of in between. It's contemporary paranormal. <laughs> so <Yeah>. it's like, <laughs> uh, but The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh mm. is a <laughs> YA with the main character who has uh, type one diabetes. And that's like a big part of, of the arc that it's a sapphic romance with a haunted house and it's great. Mm -hmm. Another one that might not be strictly contemporary, but it's close enough. It's a contemporary-ish retelling of Hamlet. And that's um, As I Descended by Robin Talley. Oh, and yeah. It takes place at a boarding school and it's lesbian Macbeth. Oh yeah, sorry, the Scottish play, not Hamlet. <laughs> Although, if you want queer Hamlet, that's um, The King of Infinite Space by Lindsay Fay. That one's oh. adult, but it's fantastic. Oh. I get a free pass on this once every live show, so I do have to yes, mention Cemetery do. Boys by Aiden Thomas, which is contemporary paranormal romance, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the love interest has ADHD, so try to fight me. Thank you very yeah. much. Yes. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to fight you. No way. Thank no. you. You would lose. So. No <laughs> Actually, Anna Marie McLemore's latest book has characters well. as well, which has a yes. magical piece, but it's highly contemporary. Recommend. It is contemporary magic Realism. Mm -hmm. yep. As two non-binary really... Latina characters, one of them has um, dyslexia, dyslexia and ADHD. The other one has ADHD as well. Mm -hmm. And I think really there's good. something else I'm missing. But yes, they're both neurodivergent and they're both yeah. trans spec and they're both Latina. Yeah, that one's on my TBR for Queerly Readathon. And it's definitely a romance. So it is, yeah, it is definitely a romance. Uh one that's a historical that I'll I'll throw in since I didn't mention this in my other one is The Queer Principles of Kit Webb by Cat yes. Sebastian. Yes. It has a disabled character and it's a male male romance. Um it's true. Which, and it's fun. That was a good one. Awesome. Um yeah. this is not contemporary, but The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill is a so beautiful cute. graphic novel for children. It has queer rep, it definitely has romance, it has disability rep. It's beautiful and very sweet and very easy to read, like knock it out in half an hour. If that. Mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. haven't read it, I, I know I got it from my library. It is probably available through your library, but um, yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. cute. I love her art so much. Yeah. It's adorable. Um, I haven't read any of their books, but Jen Wilde is also a disabled queer author. I think yep. one of their books, does one of their books have an autistic main character, Kathy, do you know? Uh, yes. So Queens of Geek, uh, there's yes. two main characters for that one. One of them is bi and one of them is autistic. So basically she, they split their identities <laughs> into two different characters. Nice. Uh, one other YA one that I really liked was Cool for the Summer by Dahlia Adler, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which has a bisexual main character with a bisexual love triangle, which yep. is, is, is interesting to see. So, oh, okay. The, well, no, that's not a romance. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I just read another book, but it's like YA horror. <laughs> <laughs> with a bisexual love triangle. Hey, or tell us anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm well, down. it's about to come out Summer's Edge by Dana Melly. It's mm. so good. They're pitching it as Rebecca meets the Haunting of Hill House. And it's a group of friends who are spending the summer at a lake house the summer after one of their friends had died the year before. Mm. And it's very messy and possibly haunted. And it's like the the twin brother of the girl who died is the ex-boyfriend of one of the characters and her ex-girlfriend's parents own the house and they have like toxic <laughs> relationships. It's great. Sounds nice and messy. I love it. Yes, it's very messy. Not a romance, but they try. I mean, there's romantic elements in there. There are romantic elements, yeah. sure. It's coming out at the end of May. So. Just gonna assume there's no H E A at the end though, which is no. a necessity here. Not, yeah, not really. I mean, I don't know if it counts as a romance, but if I'm remembering correctly, this is kind of an epic love story by Case and Calendar. It has a love interest who is hard of hearing. I think if yeah. I'm remembering yeah. correctly. So Correct. there's that. Yeah, this last comment is true as well. I've heard there's OCD. 
rep in the charm offensive as mm. well. I haven't read that yeah. one. But. Oh, and I guess like too, with like, with the gravity of us, there's a lot of mental health, stuff, anxiety, like the, yeah. anxiety and health. depression. Um, mm -hmm. So that could, yeah. Yes. Yep. There's that. Good. Yep. 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 Um, yep. Oh. Um, another YA is uh, <laughs> Tell Me How You Really Feel by mm -hmm. Amina May Safi. Yes. That so one good. is like kind of like an enemies yeah. to lovers kind of thing, which yeah. I really enjoyed. Yes. And then um, one that's like very, the one that I really enjoyed that is like, it's told through like letters and like texts and stuff like that is A Million Quiet Revolutions by Robin Gao. Mm -hmm. um it's about um two trans boys that um one of them like moved away and they're like best friends and they make up these names after a um after one of them read a story about um trans soldiers from the civil war i believe and so they that's how they connect us through like history and it's just like really cute and it really peaceful because of, of the way that it's like told hmm. um chloe leese is oh, a neurodivergent yeah. yes director. thank you oh, oh. other books have disability i'm currently yes. reading this one i know my friends love all the series but i can't yeah yes. i don't think i've heard a complaint about her <laughs> yeah and also this her. one specifically there was complaints about the rep in it and she she fixed it, it did it so Good she, for her. Yeah. So we like her. Yes. I love that. We love when she's autistic. She's autistic and queer. And I haven't read all of her books, but I read The Mistletoe Motive, which I don't care if it's a holiday book. You should read it anyway. And it has a demisexual <laughs> main character as well. So it was really good. Really cute. I love it. I do think that most of her books are straight couples. The new one is male male. I don't know for sure. I don't know if they're in a straight passing relationship or if they yeah. are gender said. I don't know. Yeah. But I believe the new one is the only one that is same sex. Yeah. Yeah. But well, also, the motive still counts because she's demi. Because she's demi, right. so that yeah. counts also. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody on the rainbow counts, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's just helpful for people if yeah. they want. It's just to know right yeah yeah. Know. yeah for sure um what was the other oh okay if you're looking for something short to read that i know i've recommended before that's just fun and very quick is uh her night with santa by adriana mm. herrera <laughs> it's uh like a erotic short where santa is a butch lesbian Woman. named chris yeah. And uh, the, the I think niece of one of the Magi kings is staying at her house for the Something night like and then happens upon her. And yeah, it's like a Michelle had to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> space was also amazing when you said that. It was just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's a fun one. And it's like 50 pages or something. So. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. Um, I would not personally recommend anything by Meredith Russo oh. because they have been flagged as an abusive person and author and figure. So, yeah. just so you know, in case you didn't know, I personally would not recommend their work. Yeah, that is accurate. Uh, Go read it. It's uh, quite the Google. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard about Google. that, I started diving into it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, you need something to do this morning. Yeah, There's something to do. <laughs> um, another one that I don't think a lot of people realize is queer because it's two bisexual people in a straight passing relationship I hope is you Electric oh, okay. Idol by Katie Beautiful. Robert. <laughs> oh, yep, I'm reading that right now. Yes. In. So, so it's good. good. This one also I saw has, it it's... in Walmart yesterday and I was like, we have won. We have a <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, but yeah, so she does like pretty sexy romance. And this one has good uh, fat rep in it as well. It does. Like, yes. Really good fat rep. Yeah. 
Another, when you said that, another contemporary adult romance uh, that sort of flies under the radar that a lot of people don't clock is A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria, which has two bisexual main characters who are obviously falling in love, second chance, like childhood friends to lovers. So it is, Alexis Daria does like steamy very well. And like, I think Mm -hmm. that's one of her best like steamy books. So it's really fun, very tropey. So if that's your thing, you should definitely read it. Uh, if you want another short one, I have a neighborly by Katrina Jackson. This features two women who are in a relationship. They move. Um, very well, they they they're both in separate relationships that are straight passing, um, and they end up as neighbors, and they will kind of compete against the wall to, with each other. I would call uh, this and polyamorous. Then, this counts. It is polyamorous. polyamorous. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they decide to like with agreement and communication amongst mm-hmm. their partners to open okay. the relationship, and they both start hooking up. Yep. This one also has some curvy rap. Our one of our male, our uh, male, one of our female <laughs> main characters is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, is curvy, and this is a really steamy, really just good like poly rep book. I feel like because often I feel like you get like lack of communication and mm-hmm. people's feelings being hurt. Whereas this was like all open communication and just a lot of sex in the best way. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I have lots of short ones, but they're not all contemporary um, <laughs> because apparently I really like queer romances where one of the love interests is a demon. So I have lots of those. <laughs> but um, this one is Exodus 23 by Freydis Moon. And I'm not sure of the author's identity. I'm not sure if they're trans or non-binary, but they are, um, I think, disabled and Latinx. This is a Latinx main character, falls in love with a biblical angel. And the main character is trans mass. He's a trans man, but not fully transitioned. So if that is um, representation that you want to see on page, there's sex scenes and um, it's also kind of religious, sacrilegious stuff and being accepted by your religion. And so obviously there, um, there's a lot of Catholicism and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, you know, if you don't, <laughs> if you are Catholic to the point where um, sacrilegious is going to bother you, then probably don't read this because <laughs> it's there. <laughs> but it's really, really good. It's also pretty short. Um, also, Avita Weiss is one of my favorite authors. They um, are non-binary, and all of their books are paranormal, but they do very short novellas really well, and I really like their um, premise. Hello, Joe. <laughs> um, they write really short novellas, and then they write a full-length book after following the same character it's really good and i will finish this thought over there yeah (laughs) i just wanted to i know they can't respond but a quick note on language i would not use the phrase not fully transitioned that's not a thing so yeah i think what they're trying to say is not physically transitioned that's my assumption or not medically transitioned perhaps but just not like i'm not saying it was meant with ill intent i'm just saying for anyone listening that's not the language that uh, trans people would use. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, i trying to think, like, have we missed anything? Oh, Is anybody... we have. <laughs> we have. <laughs> well, I mean, I know we've missed books, but, like, have we missed any prompts that, like... Oh, I have to even are... been looking at the prompts. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I've um, been trying to, I've been trying to, like, get to some of them. I'm just trying to think if we've, if there's anything... Have we done um, any 2022 releases? Oh, um, no, they're mixed up. Few. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've done a few. Okay. I was like, I feel like we have, but then I was like, that's one that immediately stood out to me. Yeah. If I could go back to the disabled author really quick, I did yeah, want to yeah. mention S.A. Chant, who previously wrote under mm-hmm. the pseudonym Austin Chant. And they have a, I believe, a novella called Coffee Boy, mm-hmm. um, which, if you wanted to do, well, I mean, any of theirs count as like indie released but like contemporary wise that one's also an indie release and that so that's about like a young trans guy who works in like a political office sort of thing it's like an office romance Mm -hmm. you know male male romance so there's that and they're in general just a good 
queer, trans, disabled author to read and support. Awesome. Um, so one thing I think we haven't specifically talked about, although I know we've mentioned some books that fall under this, is uh, Queer Black Love. Mm -hmm. So I know um, Fall Into You would count for that. I think, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but I think the heroine in one of these is Afro, in this is Afro Latinx. Um, but once, I think so, I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, Once Goes to Twice Shy is a novella from Alyssa Cole that's mm -hmm. great. Yes. And there are a couple in real life. It's such a cute cover. Yes. <laughs> uh, but Alyssa Cole has a few queer yes. Black Love books. If mm -hmm. anybody else has other suggestions. I was going to say, we already mentioned Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding. That one is Black Love. Right. I'm yeah, also neighborly would of, also be Black Love. Yes. Um, yes, Neighborly. Um, I'm So Not Over You by Kasoko Jackson is also Black Love. We, met, we mentioned Leah Johnson. So mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. her second book, specifically Rise to the Sun, is Black Love, Black Sapphic Love. So yeah. off Whereas the top of my head, that's what I yeah. think of. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. Um, so we have some other recommendations. Mm. Yes, Mika James is on my TBR for this readathon. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think like what else. Yeah, the problems. Yeah. I mean, other things that I haven't mentioned, uh, like, you know, I, like I have all the Adriana Herrera books. Literally, so all like, of them. Well, most like of them, yeah. Manga Mistletoe for Latinx Sapphic with baking, which is fun holiday kind of mm -hmm. thing. American Sweethearts has uh, bisexual characters in a straight passing relationship. Mm -hmm. um, American Fairy Tale is a uh, male male romance. One of them's a guy's is a, a social worker. It's great. Yes. I just all her books are all of them. American Love Story, yes. American mm -hmm. Dreamers, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, I keep eyeing, they came out in these gorgeous new trade paperbacks that I really want, even though I don't need them. <laughs> like, yeah. they're, they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. I saw them at the store the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, what? These were really I nice. know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, the Mingos and Mistletoe. Yes, there. it's so mm -hmm. good. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sweet Hand has a bisexual character. Yeah. That made me, I was looking at my list. I was like, that's right. Sweet Hand is bisexual main character. Yep, that's right. Small Town Secrets by Katrina Jackson. And that would be, um, and that would be, I think, Black Love as well for, for Sweet Hand. Mm -hmm. that would be, that would work. I know that one is, yeah. Um, I have a couple. Back to Exodus 23. Sorry, sorry for the <laughs> wrong description. I know, I can't think of how the author described it. I, I looked, I didn't see I know that there was something about it that. <laughs> We're cursed, I think. <laughs> um, okay. There was something specific about the pitch of that book, um, which I can't think of, it, but wrong description. Yes. So apologies for that. Um, um, what? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to see if you get one that I'm going to wreck. If you don't, I'll wreck it. <laughs> Um, Feed by V Device is very, very short. It is a fairy, a non binary fairy, and a succubus. And um, it's very, very steamy. And there's, they are work rivals. Ooh. She hates him. He enjoys seeing her flustered. And um, turns out he's actually a sex worker and shows up at her door for a feeding. And um, things things go from there. And it's very good. Nice. Also, right. um, for Katrina Jackson, The Enforcer, which is one of her Mafia series, is a, she breaks up with her polyamorous relationship at the beginning of the book and then goes to Italy to find her sister. Mm. And it's explicitly child-free. Neither one of the main characters want to ever have children. And so that is also... A good and also they're both bigger characters so um you have that and there's um a submissive hero and public sex so that's very good and it can be read as a standalone even though it's farther into the series 
Nice. This was oh. going to be my other rec was if you haven't read Zenny, you have two, both characters are bisexual, which is like the best. I love when that <laughs> happens. I feel like we're starting to get it more, but like it doesn't happen enough. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's such a good time. And it's a marriage of convenience so that she can get the inheritance from her aunt. And, you know, just lots of secrets are found out. So it's like family drama. Yeah. But not like too angsty family drama, like just perfect. And there's pegging. So like, where can you go wrong? You Why can't. Not? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I like marriage of convenience. Especially when it's like to find out, you end up finding out like dirty family secrets. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> there were all these truths that were hidden. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to point out that I didn't think about earlier is because I think the prompt says dis for the disability one that it's either rep or author. So right. anything That's by Talia. Yeah. So any, yeah. So like anything by Talia Hibbert would count. Would count, yeah. yeah. So good point. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So we are getting close to an hour, which I feel like is probably a good amount of time to do this for. Um, does anybody else have like one or two sort of final recommendations they want to throw out? Or yes. any if there's anybody who's like desperately needing a specific kind of recommendation oh, yeah, please. in the comments, mm -hmm. feel free to to ask and we'll see what we can Erica. do. Erica. Erica. Um, I feel like we should just mention Heartstopper. Like, I'm not going to say anything about yeah. it, but like Heartstopper exists. Okay. So if you want something quick, you can read the graphic novels, but there's also a novella called Charlie and Nick, which also qualifies as a romance. So Heartstopper exists. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I actually, so I haven't, I I have been wanting to see the adaptation, but I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. yet. I'm like, happy. Oh my I God, know, you're good. I know. Die. I know. <laughs> Like when I want to, when I watch it, I want to just sit down and watch yeah. it. Oh my god! Walked out that bit of time to do it. I'm yeah. like, I'm low key wondering if it would be, if it would be possible to do like a watch party thing during the readathon for it. <laughs> that would be fun. That would <laughs> be, be fun. I don't know. We'll see. That'd be really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. What we can, what we can yeah. Do. Another fun. graphic novel that I'd recommend is called Chef's Kiss by Jared yeah. Melendez. It's really cute. It's about this guy who has just graduated from university but can't get a job because he doesn't have experience. Um, so he ends up working in this kitchen and it's just kind of chaotic and delightful and he gets a yeah. crush on a sous chef and it's it's Aww. really cute. I really enjoyed it. I just got yeah. that. I'm very excited to read yeah. that. I would also recommend Thanks. Bloom yep. if you're in the market Ooh. for graphic novels. Oh, Bloom is a good exactly. one. It's an MM romance. Also it takes place in a bakery sort of situation mm -hmm. where I think the main character works at his family bakery, but he wants to like leave. And I think he has a band that he like wants to start making music with. So like yep. his family hires like a new chef or baker, I guess, to replace him. And they end up like falling in love and it's very soft yeah. and cute. It's so cute. And check please. Yes, check please. Yes, check please. Oh, I love check please. Yeah. yeah. And mooncakes. Mooncakes. Oh, mooncakes. mooncakes. Yeah, mooncakes. Oh. <laughs> There's actually one that I think is oh okay never mind it won't be out in time. Oh darn! <laughs> <laughs> I had an early like this is the problem with reading arcs of things. Like, yeah. Like, oh shoot, it's not out till July. But there is a graphic novel coming out called Blackwater, um, mm. that's like a male male paranormal romance graphic novel, mm. and uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Fun. Because we're talking about graphic novels, there's also Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms, which has mm, a trans main character, it. and it's sapphic, and it's about, like, sapphic cheerleaders cheerleading together, mm. so <laughs> there's that one. <laughs> yeah. um, I also feel like it would be remiss of us not to mention Adiba Jagadar when we're talking about YA romances, so if yeah. you haven't read The Henna Wars... Or Honey and Issues Guide to Fake Dating, which like the trope is right in the title there. So it's like if you mm -hmm. haven't read those, you definitely should because they're fantastic. I need to read our second uh, one, but the first one was so good. Yeah. Oh, they're both, yeah, they're both so good. Nate Plus One by Kevin Van Wy just mm. came out and it's adorable. Mm. It's like a YA male male romance kind of rom com thing with friends to lovers. And part of it takes place in South Africa at like a fam family wedding thing. It's oh, great. Cute. <laughs> Interesting. Nice. Yeah. I haven't read this yet, but I really want to. Delilah Green. Yes, I, yes, I highly recommend Delilah Green. I was like, okay, just, what like, do I recommend? Like, <laughs> yeah, that was first on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially for a trad like 
sapphic romance. It was a uh, surprise. Yeah. I was so happy. We're getting a second book later this year. Yeah. Like, what? I know. I can't <laughs> wait. So I love it. <laughs> it looks yeah. really good. Astrid's book. Yeah. It'll be interesting. But yeah. And like literally everybody in Delilah, like everyone in that cast is queer, every single person. So I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. That's awesome. It's like, so good. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Um, I have The Bastion's Betrayal by Katie Robert, which is a mafia mm -hmm. book. The main character is bisexual. Obviously, Katie Robert um, will tell you that all of her books are queer people, whether, <laughs> whether it's sex <laughs> it or not. Um, I know somebody said that, like, the third book in the... Uh, what's the Neon God series name? Dark Olympus. Dark Olympus. Thank mm. you. Somebody said that like the third book in Dark Olympus was the first one with queer rep, and she was like, "No." <laughs> also, that one's going to be polyamorous, and it's yeah. coming out this month, I think. So yeah, nice. yeah. And then I haven't read it, but Black Love and Polyamorous. I know quite a few people who have read it and have signed off on it. A Blaze by A. H. Cunningham. Um, this is on my TBR for the readathon. So wow, I don't know really anything else about it except I've seen enough people love it that I'm like okay yes I mean. <laughs> one of the prompts was Asian author yes, yes. Um, and I don't know if we've hit it or not because we've had a couple but okay cool and they kind of just mixed in yeah. yeah yeah just wanted to make sure but um one that I wanted to recommend is um by someone who's interracial not not explicitly Asian mm -hmm. but um it's called Heart and Soul by Aaron Kinsella mm. and it's about um this woman who wrote a historical book set in Seoul because that's where her family is from and then ends up actually going there for the filming of the TV version of her book and then finds out that her bias from her favorite K-pop group is actually playing the main character and then they end up in a marriage of convenience and they're both queer and a bunch of the other cast is queer and I can't wait for more books from the series to come out. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Also, this is your reminder that for the uh, Asian prompt, South Asian also counts. So, <laughs> um, um, yeah. I know Courtney Milan, Jackie Lau, I believe, is yes. queer. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like Jiren J. Zhao would also qualify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Sorry, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is not contemporary, but Tasha Suri. Mm -hmm. in South Asian mm -hmm. and writes queer fantasy. Um, so yeah, there's 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 definitely some great authors out there. So mm -hmm. okay, <laughs> cool. Well, we have thrown a whole. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Thank you. I forgot about this. Cole McCade is mixed Asian, and mm -hmm. actually, I think also in, indigenous. Um, mm. I don't know if I've heard of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to read Criminal Intentions, but I'm like, oh, it's got like 18 books. <laughs> I know, that's the only thing stopping me. The only reason well, I haven't so like, So like <laughs> this yeah. would fit okay. like a bunch of things. Um, mm -hmm. Like this is, I, he, he did, I think, some um, like indie stuff, but the, there's this yeah. series is, is uh, Trad published and yeah. Okay, put it on the list. <laughs> The romantic agenda for Ace Rub. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Clear oh, on. yeah. Escaping yeah. Exodus. No, th this is good. And and Erica, I'm gonna do um, a sci-fi fantasy one in like a week, also. So this is good information, though. But yes, this is great information. It's excellent. It's weird. It's Escaping Exodus is like also weird. And if you can't do like horror, because it's like horror sci-fi romance. Yeah. Kind of blend. So, but it's very good. Um, oh, okay. Ooh. Cool. I don't know what that is. No, I, I haven't heard that. of that. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you all now have far more books than we can actually read in the week that we're doing this, but hopefully yes. you can go and populate your TBR with many <laughs> things. Um, thank you so much to everybody for joining. This was really fun, and uh, I love yeah. that we, like, I knew if we, like, put our heads together, we would have a ton of... Uh, <laughs> A ton of recommendations. So absolutely, this was perfect. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, everyone. And um, if you're looking for more recommendations, I will be back a week. Uh, the twenty fourth, I think, uh, the, uh, Monday. 
yeah. <laughs> with sci-fi fantasy, queer sci-fi fantasy Rex. So yay. Thanks everybody. We'll see you.